economic policies. I love it because everybody has to do their part and we have to do our part yeah. at our local level. Pastor Gene. Yes, go ahead, Pastor yeah. Rank. You know, I, I, well, I think this is one thing I was going to say is I think this is why people will probably be voting their pocketbook. They always do. But if anyone's still on the fence on who to vote for, you need to understand. Look at what the guy said. This is what loony liberalism does. You know, you can invest there. And uh, so what we're going to see, though, is we're going to see what the book of Haggai declares God is shaking everything that can be shaken. Then he says the silver and gold is mine. But I want to briefly, just for a moment, go back to something the Lord prophesied back after Trump was uh, in power back in 2017. So the economy was really at a, at a decent state. He said they will use words like recession and even depression. But know this, when you hear those words, that my plan and my man and with the people is to bring great acceleration that this country has never seen before and that God is going to pull this country out of the fire. And at that time, it didn't make any sense. But here we are. And I'm telling you, God is shaking it so he can bring a great wealth transfer and a global reset. And that's what we got to pray through. And I believe that President Trump is the man that God has anointed to help to Lance's point, that Cyrus anointing to help make this possible. All right, well, let's, let's take a little U-turn or a little turn here. There's a lot of people watching. You're, you're watching right now, and you're going, well, that, um, and nothing mm -hmm. against Norway, yeah. but that didn't help us here in America. That didn't help all the great people in New York State. So we're, everyone in America is covering or having to deal with the, the fallout from all of this. So we need to pray, first of all, give people hope. They don't have mm -hmm. to live. Sure. They don't have to partake in a depression. That's right. Uh, number one, and that's why those people on the phones will help you understand all of that. But Pastor Rank, let's pray for those people at home that are dealing with that right now. F Father, first and foremost, we come to the God that you said we come boldly, and we would receive grace and mercy and help in the time of need. Father, there's many that are in times of need. They need your grace. They need your mercy. And I pray that you would extend your hand towards them. I pray that you'd pull them out of fear, that they wouldn't fear the day, but they would fear you. And I pray that, Father, if you could cause Isaac to absolutely reap in the same year when he sowed in a time of famine, I pray no matter where people live, where they're at, where they work, even their businesses, I pray in this harsh season that, Lord, you would cause them to pray prosper. And I pray that you would even bring a restraint against the hand of the enemy that would desire to cripple our economy and bring further harshness upon those in the United States of America. And I pray, Father, according to what you prophesied. You said they would speak recession, depression, but God, you would bring acceleration. If, That's if, right. uh, if, Elijah could outrun the chariots of Ahab through acceleration. How much more can you, Father God, bring acceleration at this time? And lastly, when the disciples were in a storm and it looked impossible in the middle of the lake, you came and walked to them, Yeshua, and you got in the boat and immediately you accelerated them to the place that they were desiring. This is what we ask. We call upon you, Lord Jesus, come and continue to save this country. Continue to bring mercy and bring reprieve. And may it be uh, the greatest wealth transfer that we've ever seen to not only empower the people, but to further the gospel for your glory and for your honor in this day, I pray. This, Amen. Um, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, Elon Musk, freedom of speech. You know, who would have thought we're dealing with what we're dealing with? But look at what's happening to him. Watch he has, he has lost his privileges and it should be taken down. And, and the bottom line is that you can't say that you have one rule for Facebook and you have a different rule for Twitter. The same rule has to apply, which is that there has to be a, 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 a responsibility that is placed on these social media sites to understand their power. They are directly speaking to millions and millions of people without any level of, of, of oversight or regulation. And that has to stop. All right, so let me show you this. Pastor Hank, look at this. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. writes, uh, you know, quoting Kamala Harris, Musk has lost his privileges. Can someone please explain to her that freedom of speech is a right, not a privilege? <laughs> Kamala Harris says there has to be a responsibility placed on these social media sites to understand their power. You weren't these... You know, a few years ago, they sure liked it. If they don't police content to conform to government-approved narratives, they'll be shut down. They weren't shut down during everything else that was going on four years ago, Pastor Hank.
Go ahead. Your sure. Comment. Listen, it, it, they're going after freedom of speech. You lose your voice. You lose your victory and freedom. And what's so stupid, I mean, anything that she's saying, is she doesn't even make sense. But here's the point. Remember, Zuckerberg came out and he absolutely said that they were the ones that were part of him censoring all of us through fa uh, Facebook. What she's upset about is, I said it uh, a few months back, we're going to say, who is this Musk man? And look at what happened. He's absolutely been interviewing Trump. He's uh, absolutely looking at the future of America, about we the people. He's uh, causing there to be the uh, not the censoring of our voices, but the expansion of our voices, being able to talk openly and, and even, how about this, expose the lunacy that's out there that has been controlled often by the media. But something that I really feel very strong in my heart, and that is this, that all of this is going to, there's coming a day in America, and I don't, I don't know how to say it, but prophetically I feel it, that part of the reset that God is doing is some of this nonsense that we're seeing with how they are controlling free speech is absolutely going to be reg regulated correctly, and there's going to come a new censorship, if I could say it that way, that is not, uh, that is not going to allow some of the evil and the corruption that we've seen. So we've got to continue to push back, let our voice be heard, and watch for the manifestation of God's reset that brings this thing in order. And uh, Pastor Gene, I did bring something though real quick, because I thought you might talk about it. I did bring my flip-flops tonight, because remember we talked about last night about how the enemy is flip-flopping, you know, through Kamalish, they're flip-flopping. But I also brought a spatula, because what's coming out of their mouth you can't even believe anymore. And so this is for the waltz waffling that's happening and for the Kamala Kami burgers with Biggie Lies. So I just thought I'd say that. That's why she doesn't make any sense. You worked a long time on that, didn't you? You, you worked a... Yes, I did. And I was waiting for the right <laughs> moment tonight and it didn't come. So you just and took so one. My, I know. And my point kind of bombed a little bit. No, but no. It, it was anyway. wonderful. People All love right. you. There you go. All right. All right. But let's you. Go, you know, let me go to Lance. Lance. Um, I'm trying to get off the spatula, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Uh, uh, okay. Lance, but this is not, this is, this, let's take this globally because you and I were talking just briefly before the show and you brought up the fact about Elon Musk and uh, what's going on in Brazil. Speak to that. Brazil is one of the largest uh, audiences in the world. They had shut down Bolsonaro and, the, and Lula da Silva and their new Supreme Court is a prototype of what Harris wants. They want to take over the Supreme Court so that they can jail Donald Trump if he isn't uh, elected, uh, so that they can shut down Elon Musk and punish him for daring to support Donald Trump. So they can take Flashpoint, you and me, and begin to prosecute us because when they talk about coming against disinformation, what they mean is information that contradicts their party's narrative. If she was serious about consequences for disinformation, she should right away be saying, and we will deal with the 50 intelligence community directors who lied about the laptop from Hunter, who yeah, said it was from right. Russia when they knew it wasn't from Russia. In Brazil, where they are specifically saying, shut down the conservative sites that are criticizing the <clears throat> Marxist government, Instead of shutting them down, they should allow freedom of speech so that the best ideas can survive. Because everybody knows the left-wing Democrat Marxist oligarchy has a stranglehold on media in the United States. And that's the reason why it takes courage for Zuckerberg to tell the truth. And it takes courage for Musk to stand up against the deception. Well said. Right. Well said. Very good. All right, uh, Rick, I want you to comment. But I want you to watch this. Now, this is an easy one, Rick. I'm, I'm taking, I'm having mercy on you because nobody can set the record straight. Remember he was talking about Kamala was talking about uh, privilege. Watch what Reagan had to say. People tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car and we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what it is allowed to do. Man is not free unless government is limited. 
There's a clear cause and effect here that is as neat and predictable as a law of physics. As government expands, liberty contracts. Liberty contracts as government expands. Rick, go ahead. I'll let you comment. Oh, so good, man. I mean, this is, uh, you know, so much of what we do at Patriot Academy, we teach directly from Ronald Reagan speeches just like that, uh, because he just made it so simple to understand and 100% and right. And, you know, everything that Lance was talking about, I mean, this is uh, this is how the global communist revolution takes place. If they can shut down free speech in these other countries and then get American politicians to applaud that, like Robert Reich and others that have been applauding what they're doing uh, to Elon Musk, then it will actually happen here. We saw it happen during COVID. We've already seen a test case of this. It's part of what got so many people off the couch and involved because thankfully they had read back in the day, 1984 and Animal Farm and all these books. And they said, wait a minute, we're watching that happen right now in our in our own country. And I don't know if that clip from Kamala, uh, if she was talking about Trump from a few years ago, because I haven't seen that actual interview lately. So I don't know if she's talking about Musk or Trump or whatever, but the principle of actually saying someone could lose this privilege and that they could actually talk to millions of people without the government censoring everything that they're saying. You notice that's really what she was saying. It scares them to death that we would be able to talk directly to the American people, as Lance said, through Flashpoint or Hank, whoever said that, right. uh, or, f or through any other outlet. And, and just from a practical perspective of why they hate Elon Musk and why they don't want us or anybody else to be able to talk to millions of people, think about what we've seen happen on X in just the last few weeks, you know, we talked a little bit about John Deere and and uh, let's see who were the other ones, uh, Tractor Supply and now Ford and a lot of these big companies that have backed off all of the communism that they were implementing in their companies through DEI and CRT and all this nonsense. The only reason they've stopped, Gene, is because people like us have been talking about it and because uh, guys like Robbie Starbucks have been exposing yeah. them on X. So if they can shut down X and they can stop that outlet from people being able to talk about these things, then the, the narrative from the government would be the only thing that people hear. So from a practical perspective, we're winning out there in the yeah. culture. People really are on our side and still love the Constitution and still love freedom of speech. But if we don't have an outlet, if they're able to clamp down and shut down our ability to speak to the American people and challenge them to go be we the people, then we lose. And so freedom of speech is a linchpin for whether or not we're going to win this this uh, against this global communist um, uh, revolution. And so that's why they hate Elon Musk, and that's why we're so thankful that they pushed him into our, our open arms, just like they've done with RFK and Joe Rogan and all these other people. Bill Maher, man, Bill Maher starting to talk like he's – on Flashpoint on a regular basis. They're pushing crazy. these liberals yeah. into our arms and we welcome them. Yeah, and she was talking about Elon Musk in that video. That's, uh, we, we just cut it, wow. we cut it down. Uh, let me show you this. Man. Charlie Kirk posted this from over the weekend. I don't think people have fully internalized what a dramatic about face Kamala Harris just pulled. We were smeared for nine years that a border wall was racist, anti-American, xenophobic, fascist, we were called Nazis, bigots, and worse for nine years. Then suddenly, seven day, 70 days out from the election, Kamala Harris decides she supports one, and it's crickets from the media. The gaslighting's truly remarkable. Lance, uh, we're now at 63 days, I believe, uh, until the election. When we see this, uh, what are we to take from it? Does Kamala really think, you think she's really going to support the wall? I think it's, once again, I mean, go back to what we just talked about. You talk about disinformation. Hmm. The fact that there's no media response to her suddenly, you know, yeah. here's what they're doing. They're taking every policy Trump has, and they're saying, gee, people hate Trump, but they like his policies. So let's just adopt all his policies, because then they'll vote for us. You know, they're so... I don't like saying this because we're supposed to appear to be neutral, but when you're dealing with corruption, if you're dealing with a crime syndicate, you can't help but point stuff out. They have an independent, far-left presidential candidate named Colonel West. Now, he was going to take away one point away from Kamala in these swing states. So you know what he just came out and did? He admitted that he was going to drop out of the race in exchange for the offer of a cushy job, a big paycheck, and his and his campaign debts being paid for by Kamala Harris, he is dropping out because they bribed him for the right price. He's willing to say he got bribed. He's yeah. willing to drop out. And these and so this party is the party of corruption and bribery. I'm not that strong on weak Republicans who I consider like Ahab, 
But I'll tell you what, Jezebel is a far more serious threat right now to the prophets. This is, uh, this is a situation where she will take every point, that it, right on down to the tips. I remember when Trump came out with the idea yeah. that he wasn't going to tax on tips. That's right. Then she's not going to tax on tips. Where is, other than, and you can't rely on Charlie Kirk and, and Flashpoint, we have got to pray that this deception gets a far broader view because if the average American can see it, they'll realize she won't do a single thing she said. Because if she lied to get elected, she can flip on the lie when she's in office. There you heard. True, right? There you hear it. All right, Gateway Pundit posts this, Rick. Look at this. California Senate passes law banning voter ID in local elections, paving the way for illegals to vote. That's California. That's her state. Um, Rick, this is everything that we have talked about that's not good. They seem to be embracing at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, and you just got to ask yourself, I mean, why? Why would you want to ban voter ID if, if a county or a, a local municipality wants to require voter ID in, in their elections? Because, gee, we require voter ID for just about everything else in, in life. And we'd kind of like to know that the people that are choosing the leaders that are going to spend our money and make policies that affect all of us, we'd kind of like to know that whoever's choosing actually has a right to be choosing. And they're not even even if it's not illegals. I mean, you know, does California want a bunch of Texans to travel in for the election and vote in their election and then come back home to Texas? I mean, obviously, that's Ill illegal and against the law, but apparently it doesn't bother them. They don't want voter ID. I mean, it's obviously so they can cheat. Anybody that has any intellect at all in these discussions knows that's why they don't like voter ID, so that they can cheat. And, and I do think there are intellectual liberals that continue to move to our side because it is so intellectually dishonest. At some point, there's just something in your gut that says, I can't go along with this anymore. I, I was at the Moms for Liberty thing last weekend in, in D.C., a, a amazing event. It was so cool to see all these people come together across the nation. And there was a state rep from Texas, and I'm, I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's a, been a Democrat in the legislature for about eight or nine years, and she switched to Republican this week because she said, I just can't go along with this anymore. The, the things they're doing to kids, the lying, the deception, the, the intellectual dishonesty. It's pushing people away. The question is, will enough of that happen in time for right. us to keep them from ruining the nation? I believe it will, and I think we've heard the prophecies here to know that it can happen. We've got to do our part, though. There you go. we got to do our part. All right, let's start to wrap up here. we got about three minutes. Pastor Hank, I'll let you go first. Take a minute to wrap. Well, I like... I like what my wife has always said, you know, to Lance's point about the spirit of Jezebel. Remember, Jezebel never became king. And I believe that she is not the future of this country. God has a plan, but never forget something. The devil was the one in the garden that even used God's word, but he was called more subtle than any beast. Don't listen to the lies that's coming out of the loony left side. What you have to do is know the truth, research, and get out there and make a difference by voting for what is right and what is godly and decent. Amen. All right, Lance. You're next up. Take it well, out. Well, Gene, minute. you know, it's important that we stay filled with the Holy Ghost. I was reading today uh, the news, and I like what you're doing tonight, by the way. Today I started closing every news segment 